Gordon has a moth problem in his room. Upon noticing, he tries the pacifist approach, leaving the window open and the light off. Still, the insect's presence persists, and Gordon's fear of the dark wins out. What started off as a single fluttering moth seems to multiply daily. Every night, the moths begin to gather at sunset to beat their bodies against the antique light fixtures mounted on the walls, and by the time Gordon gets into bed, they are legion, for they are many. Inexplicably, Gordon finds himself unable to sleep for any longer than a few minutes at a time with the faint, constant sound of tiny wings flapping. It's not in his nature to kill small things, but sleep deprivation will turn a mind to new and abnormal machinations. Winding up a towel, he tries to whip the moths out of the air one at a time, but they burst into clouds of dusty, transparent blood, the sight of which makes Gordon want to vomit. He throws the soiled towel into the laundry bin and goes to the kitchen, attempting to encourage sleep out of hiding with a bottle of tequila. A quarter of the way through the bottle, Gordon takes stock of the situation. His head is throbbing, his muscles ache, and the moths have only grown in volume and number. Sleep still hides out somewhere beyond his reach. In the bathroom, he doses out a shot of NyQuil. For a moment, he doesn't recognize himself in the mirror. He downs the NyQuil, followed by a pull from the tequila to wash down the thick purple syrup. Returning to bed, Gordon turns off the lights and the moths begin flying blindly around the dark room, but they remain. He closes his eyes and falls asleep, lulled by the cocktail of sedatives and the sound of wings gently churning the air. Gordon is on a train rolling through the desert. Sunlight reflects off the sand dunes and pours through the windows, heating the compartment. Profoundly thirsty in the sauna, he gets up to find the dining car. Spotting a man in a gray suit coming down the aisle in the opposite direction, he steps aside to let him pass. The man approaches, grabs Gordon by the cheeks, and inserts his thumbs into his mouth. He is frozen in disbelief as the well-dressed man gradually applies pressure, suddenly dislocating his jaw. The man begins to crawl inside Gordon's mouth, now impossibly wide, until his oxfords disappear down Gordon's throat. Gordon awakens in his bed, sweating. The lights are on, and the moths are gone.